Exodus chapter 10. One sacrifice instead of many. Since the law has only a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of them, it can never make perfect those who come to worship by the same sacrifices that they offer continuously each year. Otherwise, would not the sacrifices have ceased to be offered? Since the worshippers, once cleansed, no longer have had any consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is only a yearly remembrance of sins. For it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. The cost and sin offering you took no delight in. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings. Holocaust and sin offerings you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second by this. Will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sin. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool, for by one offering he is made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, This is the covenant I will establish with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts. I will write them upon their minds. He also says, There were sins and their evil doing. I will remember no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin, recalling the past. Therefore, brothers, since through the blood of Jesus we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary, by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil that is his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and an absolute trust with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwavering to our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. We must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. We should not stay away from our assembly, as is the custom of some, but encourage one another. And this, all the as you see the day drawing near. If we sin deliberately after receiving knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remain sacrifice for sins. But a fearful prospect of judgment and flaming fire that is going to consume the adversaries. Anyone who rejects the law of Moses is put to death without pity on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Do you not think that a much worse punishment is due the one who was contempt for the Son of God considers unclean the covenant, blood by which he was consecrated, and insults the Spirit of grace? We know the one who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember, the days passed when after you had been enlightened, you endured a great conscience of suffering. At times, you were publicly exposed to abuse and affliction. At other times, you associated yourselves with those who so treated. You even joined in the sufferings of those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property, knowing that you had a better and lasting possession. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence. It will have great recompense. You need to endurance to do the will of God and receive what he has promised for after just a brief moment he who is to come shall come he shall not delay but my just one shall live by faith and if he draws back i take no pleasure in him we are not among those who draw back and perish but among those who have faith and will possess life